Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. This one is a little bit different. This is a sit down video. I'm not really doing a studio vlog today. So if you're looking for that, wait till my next video because it'll be that. This one is actually a video on how I present my work to clients. A couple of videos ago, I shared a little sneak peek into my pre-production process, which was building a deck for my clients. This was at the stage of refined sketches and color palette exploration, but there was actually so many questions. So I'm gonna do my best to create a dedicated video that answers those questions. I basically going to run through everything I can think of about the pre-production process when you're working with clients. I am also going to build a deck. I don't know if it's going to be like real time or if it's going to be edited slightly, but that'll be a nice surprise for later because I don't even know what it's going to be. And then also I want to include questions that you guys have provided that I haven't really answered yet at the end. So I'm going to try and remember to do like the time Cody thing so that you can skip ahead or revisit questions later. Let's just jump into it, shall we? Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Okay, so what is a deck and who is it for? A deck is basically a document that contains images and text that I send to clients to outline like what I'm planning to do and how I'm planning to do it. Basically, it's meant to communicate whatever it is we're gonna work on together in a way that they can understand and they can approve so that we're on the same page th like at different stages throughout the illustration process. I'm an illustrator so I would do it for illustration but any like freelance job that you're working with a client I think you can kind of use this as a guide. Why would I use a deck? It can be tempting not to do it just because it takes a little bit of time but I truly think that it saves time in the long run because you're not going back and forth in the final art stage as much because you've done that throughout the whole process. Aside from the fact that it's better for the client, I also think it's better for me because I'm forced to like go through that side of the process and not rush into final artwork. Um, sometimes if I rush into final artwork or go too high fidelity, I've wasted my time because the client's like, it's not really what we're after. So that's what I've learned the last however many years I've been doing this is like take the client with you on that journey because they might have different opinions to you. And if you're a commercial artist, that is important. It's not just about what you like. Where did I learn to do this? I worked as a designer for a couple of years after I left uni. I studied design and actually this is one of the biggest takeaways that I had I would put together decks so that my bosses could take it to client meetings and pitch ideas quickly learn how agencies like to explore ideas and receive ideas and how clients do as well and I think putting in a deck is like a really really universal way to like explore ideas in a way that people can understand when you want your idea to be chosen especially if it's your favorite idea you want your your idea to present in a way that's really desirable and also digestible and there's no use in just like being angry when people don't understand where you're coming from it's your job to make them see where you're coming from which part of the process do i do this in i'll use like the deck that I'm showing you today to do like concept sketches, refined sketches, anything where there's images and text together. I think it's really, really important. Um, anything where there's any sort of illustration actually. So any initial sketches, any thumbnail sketches, whatever. It's important to have like a text element to explain what you're doing. And I think sometimes in an email, it can be really, really overwhelming to see all of that together. If I'm sending over top line ideas, if it's just a sentence or two or a direction which I'm looking to explore, we will just send that an email. But for anything that includes images and text we will use this why is it important or worth doing so as i mentioned before i think it's worth doing because it takes a little time at the start and throughout the process but it saves you so much time later on and save, saves you so much energy you don't want to be like doing the final artwork and then the client come to you with all of these amends that you're like well this means i just kind of have to start again because they weren't on the same page as you you need to assume that people aren't seeing what's in your head because they're not <laughs> that's the reality also like in terms of the way that your client feels when they work with you you want people to want to work with you again that's how you build a successful creative career is that you make connections with brands and clients and people that enjoyed working with you because you you don't want to have to rebuild a new relationship every time you start on a project it's really nice to work with someone that you worked before because then you don't have to educate them on your process and like how you work and you also create really strong bonds and create better work when you work with people that you're familiar with or that you get along with so i think it's important to maintain those relationships and i think that having a really smooth process ensures that when you're building a deck, what will you need? Basically, you'll need an application that you're comfortable working in 
that allows you to use images and text and move them around really easily, but also that allows you to export it as a PDF because I think it's like a really widely accepted document format, obviously. And also it allows you to have lots and lots of pages so that if there's a few concepts, you can do that easily and not send like many JPEGs. So this can be InDesign, this can be Word, this can be PowerPoint. For me, I like to use Keynote. It's just what I've always used. Maybe I'm a dinosaur. You know when people say they use PowerPoint, I'm like, oh, that's so old school. But actually like people might say that about Keynote as well. I just think PDF is the best way to send it because people in like companies and agencies are really used to going through them. You'll also need your imagery and ideas and then you can flesh the text out in the actual document. But that's, I would have all that stuff ready so that it's a quick process and you're not spending hours and hours going back and forth between applications and stuff like that. I'm going to walk you through making a deck. If you're not interested, skip. If you are interested, stay. But yeah, then we're going to do that. I'm so puffed out. I just ran up the stairs like 5 million times, not wanting to. So, okay, how exciting. We're going to build a deck together. Let's do it. So first, let me start screen recording before I forget. One, two. All right, cool. So I hope the mouse clicking isn't too loud for you. We're going to get... Keynote open. I'm gonna build it from scratch so that you can see. I don't want any of these. Let's start with our background color, shall we? I have these here already, but this is not what my presentation colors are. I'm gonna try and keep this as concise as I can, but I'm just really not a concise person. So if you need to put this in speed mode, you can. Okay, so let's start with a title. I always like to put the client name and my name, as well as the project. So let's call this project Apple Core, shall we? Let's make it 20. We're gonna change the font now. When you're picking fonts, it's good to have one that has a good font hierarchy within like the bolds and stuff. This is the title, this is the body text, blah, blah, blah. It's just better. It's not necessary, but it's better. But I have to say, I'm really bad at layout design, so please don't um take, why are there two of these? Please don't take inspiration from my layout design because I have to say I'm not good at it. So we're gonna go, What's our client gonna be? Johnny Appleseed X for a little peach. Even though you wanna be as concise as you can, you also wanna create like a good amount of breathing room because part of like digesting text and stuff like that is being able to breathe. This is not dark enough. Not being able to breathe. I just have, I'm having an asthma attack right now. So that's all I got on my mind. Okay, that'll be the color. Then let's start a new page. The background color is gonna be something light, like super light. I don't know why this is linked under here. You can always create master designs, but like I probably should, but I don't. But just know that's an option. And I always like to break up <clears throat> pages so that the text is on one side and the image is on the other, just so that it's clear where they're meant to look essentially. And we can make it just so we know it's the same tone. Okay, that's good enough. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna need titles. We're gonna go concept one. So we're gonna pretend that this is a deck that is for, like you're presenting multiple ideas for one illustration. So you're presenting multiple sketches. The sketches are gonna be very refined, but we're gonna pretend that they're concept sketches just for the sake of this exercise. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm really bad at layout design, so don't. Come for me, please. Mm -hmm. Lunar New Year. What did? What am I gonna say? Do we want concept one? We'll go project Apple Core so that it's on every single page. And then we'll go tiger, tiger painting. So I always like to start with, let's drop the images in actually. So the images that I have here are like past illustrations, right? And I know there's a question further on about mood boards. So I'm gonna pretend that we're gonna include a mood board as well. So something I like about this is that we can instant alpha, boop. Hey. So we have our image. <clears throat> we're gonna make space for a style example. This is where you're gonna include your past work and palette, proposed palette. Right, style example. <clears throat> okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. So now we start typing. So what do we think about this? Um, I like to use bold and different sizes to make sure like the like, font hierarchy is really, like text hierarchy is very clear. I just think it's very neat. Again, I'm really bad at layout design, so don't at me on that. A vibrant and playful tiger painting for the Lunar New Year 2022. 
Oopsie doodle. Oopsie doodle. We can probably extend this a little bit. This is where we put like kind of a headline and then kind of a brief description. So this piece will be painted with, with mixed media gouache. Oh wait, we have to say acrylic. Acrylic gouache, ink, acrylic ink, and colored pencil. That's like a very basic, right? Then we gotta talk about details. So we're gonna say something like, the piece incorporates, I'm not gonna do this for everyone, we're just gonna be copying it, but this is just to give you an example. Symbolism from Puranakan art, my heritage, as well as common motifs found in my art practice. I mean, you can just ex explain however you want. Usually it's a little bit longer. I also like to do uh, feedback required if there is any the bottom here so that they know what feedback to give back. I'll usually do this in the refined art stage, but I'm gonna do it here as well, just to give you an idea. Um, approval slash feedback on concept, style and palette. Sometimes it's a little more specific, but I'm just using this as an example, obviously. So style example, let's get some mood boards going. Yikes, where did it go? What I like about this app is that you can like do this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm so bad at these videos, I feel. So bad. A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and your mom. We're pretending that these are painting. This isn't a painting I've already done, and these are examples from my practice. But since I already have done the paintings, I'm going to use them. So in each corner, you can see simplified flowers that symbolize each season. I think this is fitting because the painting is about the entire Lunar New Year. This is such a bad artist statement. Don't pay attention to this, just pay attention to the way that we're building the thing. We're gonna include a palette also. Let's just pretend that we have formulated the palette really well and taken a lot of time to do it and we're not just gonna eye drop this. A, B, C, D, E, F. And of course I like to go in rainbow water, but you don't need to. Oopsies. A, B, C, D. Why is that stuck in my head? What the hell? Beep. Come on, dude. What else? What other color can I put here? A, B, C, D, E, F, U, and your mom. This is just an example. <laughs> How do we do capacity? There. <laughs> okay, so this is our first page, right? You can change colors here, do whatever you want. Make sure we include any visual stuff that we've prepared. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I just need to do this, right? Okay, so we need to make sure we've got all any visual stuff that we've prepared. We've got moods, if you need them. We've got the sketch. We've got a brief description with any other details that we that we think are important to be able to sell the idea and make it seem really interesting. Um, and we also have feedback required for this piece. If we're in the refined art stage, if we're in the concept stage, we probably don't need that because they're just gonna be feeding back on which one they like, you know, which direction they want. So now it's just a matter of changing the text. So we're gonna do concept two and then we're gonna replace. And the thing that I like about this is that Oh, it's gonna be annoying because they're different shapes. Usually when you have like a commercial illustration project, they're like the same shape and scale because, um, you know. <laughs> How am I supposed to talk and do this? Anyway, they're usually the same shape because you have specifications for like a template or for like, um, this is gonna be hideous. Do we move these? No. We're just gonna do it like this. I, I just like to keep it consistent and let's just make sure that's in the same. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna pretend that this looks like this. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. This is what we're gonna do. <laughs> okay, we're gonna click, double click this. Then we can copy and paste. Oopsie doodle. Ah, I hope this is interesting. I feel like it's not useful at all. Oh well. How 
did that happen? What the hell? Okay. Whatever. We'll just pretend that's the second concept. Something I like about Keynote is that you can like double tap and just replace images so that they're in the same layout, if you know what I mean. And it makes it really fast to do these kinds of presentations, which is the key because often you're including this in the cost. It's not like an extra cost, unless you want it to be. You totally can, but I don't. Oopsie doodle. Just gonna quickly change this even though I shouldn't be bothered, but I am bothered. A little bit of purple. Ooh, that's so dark. We're not using that. Where are you? Is this pink? Okay, yeah, we'll use that. Oh no, wait, we should use that darker purple actually. Oh, you know what we should use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, and then we just quickly replace these. Okay, there we go. So that's just like a quick example. You're, I'm not replacing this text. I'm not replacing the copy. Sorry, I just can't go back that far into it. Blah, blah, blah. Right, and then we just copy and paste and we do that again with the last one, which is concept three. No! A, B, C, D. Ah, this is a painting that I'm working on now. If you've already seen my last vlog, you would have seen it by now. Because I'm uploading that today. But yeah, the style, not yet finished. But I've got this BTS photo that we're going to use. Yikes! A, B, C, D, E, F. I mean, why can't I make it bigger? That's irritating. Oh, I can. But you see, once you get used to the, the program, it's actually so easy to create decks like this. Like, it's just so easy. And the payoff is that your project will be more smooth, faster. I'm sure your clients will love you a little more because they feel in the loop, you know? Do we need to change the color palette? We actually do, yeah. So let's just quickly do that. A, B, C. Sorry. Just can't help myself. Can I? Ah! Why is it happening to me? A, B, C, D, you. You will ha this will be based on a palette that you have formulated. So this isn't meant to be like BSing. This is just for the for the sake of it. Okay, so we have our thingies here, right? Let's pretend these are all different. They are not, but let's pretend all of the copy is different. In fact, should we put Lauren Whips in? No, we shouldn't. Okay, and then we're gonna do a next steps because I think that's important. We're gonna use, we're gonna use this. It's always good to reuse things, right? The reason we want to do next steps is because you want basically to guide your client through a project. They may not be informed about your process or they may not have ever worked with an illustrator before. So it's good to do this so that they understand what the next steps are, where are the projects that you are, and also like what's expected of them. So we're going to say next steps, client to feedback on which concept they'd like to pursue and any changes they'd like me, okay? And sometimes you can put a date by the 24th of May. I'm not question mark. <laughs> then we're gonna do Sean to address feedback and present refined sketch of chosen concept by the 28th of May. Then, client to feedback on refined sketch. Oh, you know what we're gonna do? We're encouraging them to approve. Client to approve, because we don't want them to, you don't want your client to feel like they have to give feedback, because then it's just kind of like, sometimes they're just stretching, they don't even really mind. Rocket's calling me. Hello, my love. Hello. Hi, hey, I've just got a little uh, moment of quiet, so I wanted Yay. to call you and just verbally be able to just go through everything that, you know, is potentially stressing and stuff. Yeah. I'll let you get back to How's filming going, by the way? Well, I'm still just filming right now. It's fine. Yeah, so okay. I gotta okay. go. Okay, bye, baby. Yeah. Love bye. you. Love you, honey. Bye-bye. So, 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 so. Back to this. Why is this so big? Okay, so client to approve slash feedback on refined sketch. Then, Sean to address feedback in final artwork. 
final artwork to be delivered for review by as JPEGs or whatever. Oh, we forgot to put dates. I never really, I don't really put dates because often client deadlines will shift, but if it's a very strict deadline, then I'll put dates. So client to approve it by 29th. And this just keeps clients really fast because sometimes like, you know, what you're doing for them isn't the most important thing to them, but so you just need to give them a date and then they will follow it usually. And, and then they know if they don't give you feedback by this date, you are not going to deliver because you don't want them to, the, the, you don't want the delivery date to be like the 30th, right? And then they deliver feedback by the 29th or something. Do you know what I mean? Client to review final artwork and provide final tweaks and approve slash provide last tweaks. Sean to deliver final files and invoice boom so then they know you know what i mean so that's kind of it if you're doing a project where there's multiple illustrations and each illustration has multiple concepts i would just break it up like this illustration one and then just like this because these decks can get kind of big depending on see so you want to have different and i would recolor this to be different colors let's just do that now shall we a b c d you know what i mean does that make sense Blah, blah, blah. Does that make sense? So that it's really nicely laid out, but we're not going to do that for this. Um, what we're going to also do to finish off is to put copyright just so that no one can steal your, well, they can still steal it, but like, so your name's on it, you know? You can do this in like um, slide layouts. They're kind of like master slides. Shant on these 2022. So we're going to make that small and kind of faint as well. Right? We're gonna put it here, but the page that we will need to figure it out on how, where to put it is probably here. I mean, we could even put it here. We could even put it here. Just put it somewhere, essentially. But then it's gonna look so bad on the other page. <laughs> That's annoying. Let's just put it in the center of the page. This looks really bad, but I'm sorry. This is just a mock-up. We don't. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then you can just copy and paste it on every page. Yay! Okay, so this is what you would send to a client. That gave clarity. I don't even know if that was even very interesting or helpful. I'm gonna answer your questions to make sure that this is interesting and helpful. Your questions will be answered in three, two, one. Okay, so this is not in any particular order. It may not be the best order. I'm just kind of answering them as they came. And I just hope it's really useful. So let's go. Could you talk about the process client work usually takes? Like when do you sign agreements? How many revisions do you end up doing? Okay, so I'm gonna outline this at the start because I think it's a good one to begin with. So here is the process from start to finish. My producer, Chris, will get an email. And then if he thinks that I'm interested, he'll either text or call me um, or forward it to me. If we're interested in taking on the project, we'll ask for any details they haven't provided. This usually includes things like deadlines and um, budgets and stuff like that. Anything that will help us make the decision whether we want to take it on or not, or any concerns we'll have, we'll address now. And sometimes in this stage, we'll send through, like if they've sent a very cohesive brief, we may send like a like a top line idea or a direction we're thinking of taking to make sure that they're happy with that. Especially if it's a project where if I can't take it in this direction, I don't really want to do it. Just so that we can like waste no one's time essentially. Next step is the contracts and like written agreements. I work with a lot of uh, large companies and agencies. So they'll usually send over a contract to me. We also have a written agreement that just kind of outlines like our process of like how many rounds of feedback we've got, what they will be getting in the end, what the licensing is, and then we get them to sign it and we sign it. So we, it's just exchanging, signing and exchanging contracts and any like legal stuff. I don't usually write my own contracts because the clients that we work with usually provide them. Then I'll do the initial sketches for the idea, which are usually super rough and contain like a very brief description and usually at this stage it's a few ideas so it's a few directions that the project can take then the client will feed back on them and then i'll address the feedback in the next round of refined sketches sometimes we'll drop a few ideas or we'll pursue one idea unless the client really wants to pursue two ideas um, and then i will do the refined sketches addr address all the feedback that they gave put it into a deck send it off and then they will give feedback again they'll either approve it or give feedback if there's feedback i'll address it in the final artwork stage it's a, if it's a lot of feedback or very extreme i may ref refine the sketches again and send it to them get approval because i don't want to start the final artwork before we get approval for the concepts you know what i mean 
So any feedback I'll incorporate into the final artwork and then send it off for approval. When the client provides any tweaks or anything like that, we'll address that. And if there's nothing, that's when we send the final artwork with an invoice and that's the entire process. Do you create something similar for explaining your sketches to clients or just send them over for review? I think I did touch on this, but just to clarify, yes, anytime there's pictures and images together, I will make a deck for it. It's really easy because I've already got the file. So it's really just about replacing the images and replacing the, the copy. Would love to know how you go about projects. Do you always have so many options in color and does the client pick only one or can they pick more than one final drawing? So not always. The decks really uh, change based on what the project is and what the client wants and what I consider to be details that I need to figure out to get the project over the line, to get the concept over the line. Two studio vlogs ago, I shared my process. And the reason we explored color in that is because it was the refined artwork stage and because there was brand colors involved. And you wanna do brand colors pretty early on in the process because it's such an important part and there needs to be approvals because it's to do with like branding. So that's why I included color in that. Usually I will include color very early on in the process because it's important to me as well. But the earlier you include important details, the more time you have to tweak it and go back and forth and kind of make it something that they're super stoked with and that you're super stoked with as well. And generally, no, the client will only pick out one final artwork because we are only getting paid to create one final artwork. If they want two final artworks, that is, they're paying double for the project, you know what I mean? It's more just like presenting many ideas to begin with to see what direction they want to take. But when you get to like refined art, I think that should just be the illustrations that they're paying for and exploring that. I'd love to hear about what sorts of questions you ask clients when approached with a project, what your workflow looks like and how you break up a project in different steps. So I already explained the steps, but if it isn't specified in the initial brief, we will ask for deadline and budget. They're very important because that's gonna be a make or break for us, whether we can fit it in and whether they can afford to work with us. If it's an interesting project and they don't have budget, I'll ask more questions about what the company is and like where the images are being used to see if like it's something that I can take on for like a reduced cost, which is not something I usually do unless like I really, really love the project. But yeah, deadline and budget are the first things that we ask for. It would be great to learn more about your client process. I'm at a time in my career where I've been asked to hire illustrators like yourself, yet I'm so frazzled when it comes to putting together a proper brief and even proper introduction. What are some necessary considerations to take when reaching out to an illustrator? I love this question, this is amazing. If you provide every piece of information you can and that you have, that's gonna make the project go a lot smoother. And it means like the back and forth is less and means your work is less and my work is less. I wanna know what the project is. Like, is it an illustration? Is it a mural? Is it for editorial? Is it for social media? You know what I mean? Things like that. I wanna know who the project's for, like what is the company that is commissioning the project that will help me know whether I want to work with that company I want to know what the deadline is to see if I can fit it into my schedule and flag anything with you if I don't think it's something that I can meet I want to know the budget because I want to know if you can afford my work or if we need to negotiate or if I need to say no these are not necessities at this point but I would love to know where the work is being used and for how long because then I can give you a quote straight off the bat um, and if you're interested in social amplification as well because sometimes clients expect that but actually it's something that they need to pay for because it's you're paying for platform you're paying for like it's basically like paying for advertising essentially for the project so if you're if you're an illustrator and you're doing work and someone's asking you to do social that's an extra cost make sure you charge for it especially if you have a large platform i feel like giving illustrators all the information you have up front makes for like a smoother process at the beginning they can give you a quote straight away and also it can make the project go a lot faster because everything else is sorted out and they know exactly where where things are going and like what the context is to the project how do you translate the client's pitch into an artwork, especially if the client is not familiar with anything related to visual arts? I've had bad experiences with clients not being able to say such describe what they want. And that typically leads to lots of revisions. Also, any tips to make client work more enjoyable for both the artist and client? Okay, so the client not being familiar with, the vis with visual arts or illustration or whatever industry you're in is the perfect reason to be creating like a client deck because it's a universally digestible way to understand the process. And you're also leading them through next steps, which is something that you saw me do in like the building deck process. I always include next steps so that they're always ready for what's coming next, even if they're not used to this process. You know what I mean? The other thing is ask as many questions as you can at the beginning of the project. It's your job to retrieve information from the client because you know what you need in order to make the project smooth. 
you're the person that knows your process so you need to let them know exactly what you need from them when it comes to revisions we're very clear on how many revisions we do at the start of the project so when we're doing the written agreement it'll be like this is what we're delivering we're going to deliver a concept sketch with one round of feedback we're going to deliver a refined sketch with one round of feedback we're going to deliver final artwork with some tweaks and doing it then is good because they know that if they don't include the feedback in those stages then it needs to be paid for again because they're making you do work again essentially and usually that's really great in itself because when a client knows that they have to pay for extra rounds of feedback they're more likely to compile the feedback really concisely and really diligently and not come to you later with lots and lots of rounds it's just like a killing two birds with one stone kind of thing also like th doing it this way and doing like a concept sketch or a fine sketch la 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 and having feedback in between means that they're with you on every step of the project and they're signing off on every step of the project so if at the final artwork stage they go back and they say actually i don't like this concept at all then you're like but you've approved it already so we can't really go back and do it again unless you're willing to add extra budget because of the time loss it's like not doing damage control it's about like preventing the problem in the first place how do you come up with fitting color palettes it's not exactly about how to present work to clients but there was a lot of color stuff in the original deck that i did in the a few videos ago so i'm just going to answer it here basically i work really intuitively with color like i it's really hard to explain because it's really based on feeling either i'm like that's disgusting Oh, that's amazing. So when I get to that's amazing part, I know it's like a good color palette. Usually I'll start with like a harmonious color palette or like one or two colors and then I'll build it out with tones and tints and then I might add like some some like complementary colors in because then I think that creates a really like nice and well-balanced color palette. I do have a story highlight on my Instagram about color, so check it out. I would love to know how much time you spend on your initial ideas for client and then how long you spend on the final artwork do you always provide initial sketches or do you use mood boards sometimes when you edit your process for youtube you make it look so quick and easy it's very intimidating okay i do not mean to be intimidating i try and include the process but i need to do it in a digestible way which is why i'm happy to be doing this video so you can actually see how long things take usually initial ideas come quite quickly for me i love working to a brief i love the challenge of like constraints i find it really difficult to sit down and be like i can do anything so it's really good when i work on client work because there's already constraints in place even if it's not constraining my creative freedom it's just like this is the brand this is what they do that's a constraint i need to work to do something that that relates to that or works with that you know what i mean so initial ideas come quite quickly sometimes i'll just send like a written idea as i mentioned just to to get an idea if that's the direction they want to go the sketching part is pretty easy because it's just illustrating the idea that i've already come up with i think i can usually come up with ideas and do some quick sketches in like about an hour and dumping it into a deck that i've already have designed is not like that slow so it really only takes me like a couple of hours i think to send it off regarding mood boards i hardly ever do mood boards um usually when clients come to me they're coming to me for my work i'm that i'm in a really good good position in that way and i totally i'm totally grateful for it and i know that's not the case for a lot of people or i know that's not the case for everyone so mood boards can be important but generally i don't really do them I'll do it if I'm working with an agency who is working with a brand that doesn't know my work because I want them to direct them in the way that this is the specific work that I'm looking to create that looks like this other work that I created essentially. But it's not really a big part. I don't have a page of mood board for my clients. It's really just like attached to like the like one image one or two images attached to like the concept sketch so they know where this concept sketch is going to look like at the end because I, I i do agree it's important because some clients don't see how a like a little scribble can go to a finished artwork i think it's totally fine to make mood boards i just don't really do it that much hi how do you plan your pictures or propose a project is it the same as your concept deck yes it is i deliver most parts of the pre-production process like the deck that you saw me make and as i said if it's just top line it is we send it via email because it's just text how do you deal with situations when the client requests something that doesn't align with your brand or preference if the project isn't my vibe at all we'll usually just not take on the project because we don't have a lot of time anyway at this point i just want to take on stuff that is fun when you're working with the clients there needs to be an element of making sure the client's happy because it's commercial work right like they're paying you to make work for them. I treat most of the projects that I work on with clients as commercial work, which means it's not my brand that's most important. It's, all, it's their brand, essentially. Obviously, they, they are approaching me because they like the look of my work, but it's not like I should be able to do things 100% with creative control, with no feedback, because it's my work. That's not how it is. Um, it's not my personal practice. This is my commercial practice. So if there's like a social or public element, I will be stronger on giving feedback that is based on my personal preference but if it's commercial work with nothing like that i'm happy to like adjust it for the client 
pretty liberally actually. If there is feedback that you are not, you really don't want to do, my advice is a gentle and respectful explanation on why something may not work and not why you don't like it, why it won't work for the project. It's not, oh, well, I don't like that color palette. It's more like this doesn't work because it's not in line with the theme of the illustration or something like that because you don't want to be a brat. Like you're a commercial artist. You're like an experienced professional. Think when you're pushing back on feedback, you need to come up with a better solution. You can't just be like, no, because that's just kind of not cooperative. It's not very nice to deal with. If it's something that's like so against values, it's like really inappropriate. Of course you can just say that, but then, then the feedback is it's inappropriate and we can't do that. If it's something like they're using colors you don't like or imagery that you're not used to, or something that you don't think actually works for their goals um, with the project, I would just explain it softly and gently and be nice and kind and then also give a better solution alongside it because then it makes it easy for them to be like, yeah, that's a great solution. Instead of being like having back and forth emailing, especially if you're not doing, if you do your own emails, time is money and you cannot just be wasting time doing emails. Like I, I, <laughs> I'm so glad I have Chris because like emails, not for me. Like I'm fine to actually do them, but if I had to do all of them, I'll be drowning. I would not be able to do anything else. I want to say a big thank you to the sponsor of this video. I love Squarespace. If you've never seen this channel before, you better get used to that <laughs> because it's in every video. They power my website, they power my blog, they power my store. I did mention in the last video that I was thinking of changing my theme. I think I will do that. I think I'll do that very soon. The themes are great. You can change it seamlessly and it update everything for you. It does it for tablet, desktop, and mobile, which is really, really important for it to look good on everything, especially because people are looking on everything these days. If you have not tried Squarespace before, go to squarespace.com slash for a little peach. You'll get a free trial and 10% off your first purchase um yep that's it this reminds me of tumblr i love it that was not a good ending i just want to say thanks so much for watching and i hope it wasn't too much information too loudly and too fast you know what i mean but yeah thank you so much for getting this far if you did and if you like this video like it if you're watching any other artists like their videos because i've noticed everyone's engagement's going down so it's kind of sad because it's like youtube's so fun but is tiktok replacing youtube do people only come to youtube for like long form videos now i don't know anyway if you like these sort of videos i would love to do more of these i find them like fun to make i love sharing stuff i know that might help you guys so if you have anything else you want to know like a different topic that you want me to cover or more questions about this topic i can answer those in the comments but yeah if you have any other any other ideas for topics to cover with a video like this, I would love to do that. So yeah, that's all I wanted to say. Um, I'll see you very soon with another studio vlog. Bye.